Now what if you want to modify a preset for an animation, but you want to use that modified preset over and over again? Well, let's try this out on the beginning of our animation with the labels we're using for the buttons. I'm going to bring my timeline back to frame 1, and we're going to work on those button labels. To make things a little bit easier, let's make sure we can only work on those labels so we won't have to worry about everything else. I can do that pretty quickly by going up to the lock icon for the layers, and if I click the icon right at the very top, it's going to lock every single layer. Now I'll just go back to my website sections, that's where my labels are, and I'll click that lock icon to unlock that layer. And now any work I do, I can just select very sloppily, and all I'll select are the contents of that layer. Let me move those out just a little bit away from that edge. And what I'd like to do is have these fly in from the top. I've got four buttons and I want them to fly separately. So we'll work on setting up the animation for the first one, and then we'll see what we can do for the rest of them. The animation I'd like to do is flying in, so I'm going to set the start point by dragging all these buttons right off the top of our stage. Now last time we used the motion presets, we had our camera icon all set up. It was already a movie clip, and it was already in a layer by itself. But neither of those two things are set up for our home button. So let's click and deselect everything. I'll go back and select my home text, and for starters, let's convert that into a symbol. If you remember, that's our F8 keyboard shortcut. That gives me my Convert to Symbol dialog box, and we'll just name that BTN Home. I'll go ahead and leave the registration in the middle, and you can see we've got Movie Clip selected, so I'll click OK. Now I'm going to leave it in the same layer. We have all of our label text in the same layer right now, and let's go over to our Motion Presets panel and let's pick out a nice motion for it. I think I'm going to use one of the blur ones here. I'm going to use Fly In Blur Top. The preview looks good, and I'll go ahead and click Apply. Now we can see that our motion did get applied. There's my path right here in red. But let's take a look up at the timeline. Notice what else the Apply button did. When we set up that motion preset on it, it pulled that item out of the layer, created its own layer for it, and our new layer is set up as a motion tween. So some of the things that you need to set up, the program is going to do for you. Now before we forget, let's go ahead and rename that layer so we can keep things all neat. I'm just going to double click on layer 8, and we'll rename that Home button. And let's just go up to the timeline and we'll preview our animation. I'll drag the playhead down a little bit, and there we can see the blurry text coming in and kind of settling down here at the end. Now the preset's okay, but I want to change it a little bit. The home button ends a little bit lower than I wanted it to, but we've already seen that if I have my timeline at the end, I can just click on the item at the end and move it around to change that endpoint. So let's just move it up a little bit, and that looks pretty good. Our text comes in and ends right at the right point now. Now that's looking good for our first button, but I've got three more buttons to set up here. We can make each one a movie clip and apply the same preset, but we'll also have to make the same change at the bottom. Now it wasn't a big change, but this will give us a chance to try out custom motion presets. Let's select that motion tween. I'm just going to click right up here in the tween line, and I can see in the property window I have motion tween selected. We can go over to the motion presets panel, and down at the bottom here, there's an option for saving your selection as a preset. I'll go ahead and click it, and we'll give our preset a name. I'll call it Button Fly In. We'll click OK, and let's take a look. Down at the bottom of our Presets window, we have a Custom Presets folder, and that's where any presets that I want to save will be stored. Now let's set up our other three pieces of text. I'm just going to wind this back to the very beginning, and I am going to set these up as movie clips. So I'm just going to select Portfolio, press F8, we'll call that BTN Portfolio. I'll leave all the same settings, we'll click OK, and we'll do it for Exhibitions, F8, and BTN Exhibitions, press OK, and finally Contact, once again F8, and BTN Contact. Now I'll start with Contact here since I've already got it selected. I'll just go over to my Motion Presets, click on my new preset that we just made, and click Apply. 
We'll do the same thing for exhibitions. Apply the same preset. And then portfolio. Let me click away from that to close the panel. And we'll take a look up here in our timeline. You can see that it created several new layers as needed for me. And we'll just need to rename them. Now I'm just going to move my timeline here down to the end of our animations. That way we can see all the buttons. And let's just click on layer 9. We can see that's the contact button. So I'm just going to name that layer appropriately. Contact button. Layer 10 is the exhibitions button. So we'll double click on that layer and call that exhibitions button. And where we used to have our website sections, that's now our portfolio button. So we'll name that one as well, Portfolio button. Now I like to keep these in order, so I'm going to drag the Home button down to the bottom of the stack so that we've got Home, Portfolio, Exhibitions, and Contact all sitting here. In fact, we can even do a little bit of tidying up by making a new layer folder. I'll click on the New Folder button, and we can call that folder Button. Now this is just to kind of keep things tidy. If we drag things around on the timeline, let me pull my timeline down just a little bit here, give us some more room, and I can select all of these button layers and just drag them into the button folder. Notice when I get to the folder, I can pull it right a little bit, and it's nested inside that folder. And we'll just put home inside there as well. And with a layer folder like this, you can simply collapse it just to save some space on your timeline if you don't want to clutter it all up. And we can open those back up just to work on the buttons.